Hello, my name is Niall Enright. I'm a lecturer in the Mechanical and Automobile Department at Limerick Institute of Technology. And today I'm going to have a look at the special topic on the Engineering Leaving Cert paper for 2014, which is fuel injection systems. So behind me, we have a fuel rail board, which basically has the components of the fuel injection system just out on a, on a board so that students can uh, better understand them. So we can start with, this is the airflow meter. So it measures the amount of air that's being drawn into the engine. Beside that, we have a throttle body holding the, the throttle, which is connected to the accelerator. And the throttle opens and closes and allows the amount of air to be drawn in, depending on the position of the throttle um, detected by the accelerator. Along with that, we have a temperature sensor from the block, so affecting the, the amount of fuel to be injected when it's cold or warm, the engine block. Beside this is a lambda sensor, which measures the amount of oxygen in the exhaust, and that's for, um, for looking after the fuel after we've burned it, measuring the oxygen to make sure that the measurement of fuel that was inve injected into the cylinder in the first place is correct. After that, we have a crankshaft position sensor. So the crankshaft position sensor works, it has a disc with a number of teeth cut on the disc, and that rotates with the crankshaft. So as the crankshaft rotates, it, it passes this sensor here, the, the, the teeth on the, on the reluctor disc pass the, the sensor, and it produces a wave pattern. At a certain point, there is a tooth missing, and the wave pattern, there's a gap in the wave pattern, and the ECU recognizes this as a reference point in the engine, which is top dead center for cylinder one and cylinder two. It also gives us the engine speed. The number of waves that pass the sensor per second will give us the engine speed. Okay, we'll switch on the fuel rail board. And we can see the crankshaft position sensor, the crankshaft is rotating, the reluctor disc is rotating, give us a signal to the ECU. We can also see that we're getting signals from the airflow and a throttle position sensor down to the ECU. The ECU then in turn is calculating how long to open the injectors for. And the injectors have a fuel rail on the top here, which has just got pressurized fuel. And the fuel is being delivered up from the fuel tank, in this case here, at about two bar worth of pressure. And the injectors being controlled again separately by the ECU, just open to allow the fuel pressure uh, and the fuel to spray into the cylinder, well, into the inlet manifold in indirect injection. Okay. We can look more closely. This is a um, manifold with a rail and injectors as part of it, just to get a bit closer look. So the airflow is drawn in here, and this is just bolted on just onto the block. And we can see what the rail looks like with the injectors attached. Okay. Okay, shortly now I'll start the engine and we'll have a look at the wave patterns produced uh, by the sensors. So first of all, we have a fuel tank down here with our fuel pump immersed in that. So when the engine is on, the fuel pump is running. Or when the ignition is on, the fuel pump is running. It delivers fuel pressure through these lines up onto this fuel rail. And we can see at the moment we have two bar worth of fuel pressure. When we're at, when we're at idle conditions, we're using very little fuel. So fuel is, more fuel is being delivered to the rail than we require. So we have a regulating valve, which is here. It's controlled by the vacuum in the manifold. So at idle conditions, our throttle valve here is closed. And the vacuum in the manifold is quite high. The vacuum pulls on the regulating valve, which allows fuel to escape from the rail back to the tank, maintaining a two bar pressure on the rail. When we accelerate, we open our throttle valve, the vacuum in the manifold collapses or decreases, and there's less of a pull on the uh, regulating valve, which in turn closes the, rail off, the line off to the rail a little bit, and the pressure increases, and less fuel goes off to the tank, and more fuel stays in the rail. So if I remove this pipe from the manifold, it reduces the vacuum at the regulator, or removes the vacuum from the regulator, and the regulator snaps closed, and it will increase the pressure in the rail. If we take this pipe up, we can now see that the rail pressure has gone up to over 3 bar. So the crankshaft position sensor, it looks at the speed of the, the engine and also the position um, of the pistons. So we can probe into it here, and we can see on the oscilloscope the wave pattern produced by the teat on the reluctor disc. So each tooth produces a square wave on this hall sensor. And at a point, there is a tooth missing. 
which gives us a gap on the wave. That information then is taken by the ECU, and that reference point indicates top dead center for cylinder one and cylinder four. It can also determine the engine speed by the number of waves passing per second. So the camshaft position sensor function is to identify what stroke each cylinder is on. So to identify when cylinder one, for example, is on its induction stroke. So we can probe into the wave pattern again using our oscilloscope. And we can see our wave pattern. When there's just one wave on its own, it indicates induction stroke for cylinder one. Then followed by three waves, which indicate induction stroke for cylinder three, then four, and then two. And that's the actual firing order for this engine. One, three, four, two. Now the engine now, the ECU now knows the position of the engine, the speed of the engine, and the individual cylinder positions. So the next sensor to look at is a throttle position sensor. So we can see on the oscilloscope, it's sending a, a continuous signal of 0.5 volts to the ECU. That's for idle conditions. So when I increase the throttle, we can see that the voltage output to the ECU now varies from 0.5 to 4.5. And the ECU from this can determine how much fuel the injectors need to give the cylinders or how long to open the injectors for. So the ECU has taken information from the crankshaft, the camshaft, the airflow and the uh, throttle position sensor. And from that, it's going to calculate how long to open the injector for. And again, using our oscilloscope, we can look at the wave pattern and we can see how long the injector is open for. At idle conditions on this engine, the injector is open for almost three milliseconds. If I increase the throttle, we can see that from the, from the oscilloscope and the wave pattern that the injector opens for up to eight milliseconds. So the next sensor to look at is the lambda sensor. It's placed in the exhaust gases and it determines the amount of oxygen that's left in the exhaust after combustion. This is important to measure the uh, oxygen content as this will tell us whether we're running rich or lean. If there's too much oxygen in the exhaust, it means we're running very lean and gives us a 0.2 of a volt on the oscilloscope. If there's very little oxygen in the exhaust, it means we're running rich and gives us 0.7 of a volt. The ECU then adjusts the length of time the injector is open to compensate. So this is a timing light. And what this timing light is, is represented is every time the light flashes, it indicates a spark in cylinder number one. When cylinder number one gets a spark, it goes on its power stroke. After its power stroke, it goes down the cylinder, then back up the cylinder on its exhaust stroke, back down the cylinder on its induction stroke, drawing in air and fuel, and back up on its compression stroke, every time before another light flashes. This is at idle conditions. I want to show you what it looks like at higher RPM. So at higher RPM, it looks like the light is on continuously. But the light is actually pulsing, and the piston is moving up and down twice in between each one of those flashes. So that gives you an indication of how quickly the ECU is making these decisions, how quickly it's injecting the fuel, and calculating the amount of fuel that needs to be required 